Just hope it's raining outside right now. It is. Hey, that's great. great. Thank the Lord for that. He gives it to us when He chooses to for what's best, doesn't He? And, but uh, He said we can pray for it. When it comes, we thank Him for it, that's for sure. So it's good to be here together as Christians tonight, together as God's people. And uh, what I want us to do is um, pray. And then I want us to look at prayer talk about prayer and study it, and uh, just worship the Lord together as we do all of this. We're going to start out singing, um, what, what's that number there, brother? 368, he lives. 368, you probably know it, but if you aren't confident, 368, we're going to sing that one, and at the end of our service, uh, we are going to sing 630, what a friend we have in Jesus, so... Um, if I bore you too much, just go ahead and flip back to 630 and we read those verses. That way when we get ready to sing it, you'll be uh, in tune. You'll be ready, okay? Uh, so let's sing together, He Lives, number 368. You want to stand? Let's sing. Let's stand. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Scripture or two or three or four that has meant a lot to you lately. Uh, now's the time for us as brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, meeting in His name. Time for us to share those. So, uh, what's on your mind as far as uh, praise items or prayer requests? Thank you, Lord. Who? Jesse Eves was supposed to be moved. Lord for improvement there. I love friends. I will just pray more for the rain than we need. Amen. Praise God for the rain. Isn't that the truth? Oh yeah, we yeah. We aren't grateful enough, but we're grateful right now. <laughs> Brother, you yeah. What's his first name? Yeah. Praise items other than rain. Improvement. Jesse. Karen Hudson's mother had a trick of the day. Pray for her to recuperating. And then Stacy uh, is going to be having surgery tomorrow in Augusta. Uh, two different procedures for two different situations and uh, uh, hiatal hernia and TIF procedure. I don't know those, but that's okay. God does. Um, let's be praying for her tomorrow morning. All to go well, Stacy. She's such a sweet lady. And uh, Karen's mom, of course. Uh, I've written down here that uh, we uh, we want to grow, but we want to grow for the glory of God, and we want to grow for the glory of God. And I know that Matt, you, and Lorraine have a great burden and leading to reach more people. I saw some of the uh, young guys, young, uh, older youth coming to practice ball yesterday. Yeah, or the day before, okay. And um, some outreach. So when you do pray for our young people, one of the things you can pray for specifically is that God would give all of us, but especially Matt and Lorraine, but all of us, more contacts. I bet if we pray for that, we're going to be surprised at the number of people God puts in our path. But there's people who need him, 
And so therefore they need us and our witness of him. So let's pray for these contacts with youth uh, in different ways. And of course, uh, where the youth all end up going, a lot of them, uh, during certain years, is going to school. So we want to pray for uh, those contacts and opportunities that might be available for us. So join with us, not just tonight, but try to make a note of that and pray for uh, outreach there. And of course, for all that goes on here at the church already with King's Kids, adults on mission, so forth, and all our missionaries. We're going to talk about missionaries in a little bit. Praise the Lord. All right, I want you to give me some peeves that we are thankful and praise God about. Some peeves. So you can name any of them, and I'll repeat them so it goes over. Uh, praise the Lord, and I'll say for uh, His power, limitless power. What else? Patience. Peace. Peace. We have peace, Romans 5. Yes. Provision. Provision. In spiritual and physical, isn't it? God's provision. Are you going to go without something because God didn't want to give it to you or didn't have it? No. He, and He gives provision. Protection from God. Protection from a, the enemy, from the adversary. Bible says darts. And, uh, he's given us that protection and he uses that protection, the armor and so forth. God's protection. Yeah, I don't, I would not, <laughs> this is real, a ridiculous statement. I wouldn't want to try to live uh, without God's protection from the devil, which you, <laughs> we probably wouldn't be alive. Thank God for his protection. Yeah, protection, good thing. Promises. Promises. I thank God because when, when He promises it, promises it, it's done, right? And in His time. Thank God for His promises. Okay, what else we thank God and praise Him for? Pardon. Pardon. Forgiveness. There you go. The first two that I think of usually or almost at the very beginning is that God has a purpose. There is meaning to God. He's not willy-nilly, right, about anything. There's purpose, and it's an eternal purpose, and that means there's a purpose for you and me. And I praise God for that. Thank you for mentioning Or did I? I guess I'm the one who mentioned purpose. You mentioned pardon. Thank you. <laughs> Faith, people, especially the people of faith. Amen. So I think of purpose and then I think of plan. They're sort of at the beginning of, of almost everything, aren't they? God has a purpose. He created man for a purpose. He created the world, the earth for a purpose. He has a purpose for his church, a purpose for giving us families, a purpose for those who don't have families. He has, there's, a perp, there's a purpose, and so he has a plan in that purpose. God has a plan. He tells us part of it. Some of it he doesn't. So we praise God for those things. I want us to uh, spend time right now just praising God for who he is and for his help in giving success and surgeries and healing, protection even. Thank him for our church, and then while we do, let's also ask him to give us opportunities to reach more people. Matt, right. would you lead us in prayer?
Okay, as we uh, met tonight, and uh, if you think of something that you meant to say earlier as far as a specific thing to ask prayer for or to praise God about, feel free to do that. Um, I want to uh, consider the, our missionaries tonight and the work that they do. Um, it's exciting to think about the work of the missionary. Karen and I got to go to Uganda for two years. And maybe, maybe, I, I probably change from time to time, but right now, maybe the greatest blessing of that time is seeing how many different people God sends to do some kind of work for Him. Uh, in the country of Uganda, it's not a closed country. Um, it's not a dangerous country anymore. <laughs> Um, and it's a country that mainly, where you are, everyone speaks English. That's, that's good. So it's easy to go to Uganda in that respect. But just to see how many people are there, and maybe sometime, maybe I'm always in, I, I don't know, but maybe we'll just show you some of our pictures and, and just point to point out the many different things that people do to reach others and teach build the kingdom of God to evangelize. Uh, so I won't get sidetracked into that. Uh, but Sunday, we were talking uh, about ministry in different ways, reaching others. And uh, Brother Mark shared with us a story that our Sunday school information gave us. And I've asked him to just share that with us. And after he gets through, we're going to pray for this family um, that we probably don't even know their real names, do we? Uh, so come ahead and share with us, Brother Mark, and, and then lead us in prayer or ask me whatever. same Sunday school book that we use in our class. This past Sunday you have read at least a paragraph or two about a young lady named Leah Sharibo. Now I'd, uh, if I had ever heard that name, I'd forgotten about it. What I had forgotten was about four years ago in the country of Nigeria, a group, Islam group, a local group, went into a girl's school and kidnapped about 110 students and held, held them uh, captive for a long time. Uh, uh, some of the girls were killed. Most end up being released, except for the young lady that uh, I just mentioned. And I'd like to just read this straight from the book. Uh, it's easy, you know, living where we do, it's easy to forget that in much of the world, in many parts, what I'm about to read is typical not the exception. Believers around the world continue to endure great hardships. Believers like Leah Sharibu. Sharibu was 14 when Boko Haram terrorists kidnapped her along with over a hundred other students from her school in northeast Nigeria in 2018. The Nigerian government negotiated the freedom of all the girls who had been with her for Boko Boko Haram refused to let Sharibu go because she refused to renounce her Christian faith. The fellow students who returned home told stories of Sharibu's determined stand for her faith. She has stayed in course. I did a little research. The most recent news I could find on her was from May of this year. Apparently, she's still alive and she's still a captive. Additional figures that were given, and this is from uh, uh, the group Open Doors for, uh, uh, for 2021. Over 340 million Christians have been living in places where they might experience persecution and 
and discrimination. 4,761 Christians have been martyred. In just one year, and that's the ones that are known about. 4,488 churches and other Christian buildings have been attacked. 4,277 believers have been detained without trial, arrested, sentenced, or imprisoned. These are people who definitely need our prayers and need to be conscious of their existence. And as we live here, it's so easy to forget that they exist. But shame on us for doing so. Pray for those who are persecuted around the world. Take a few moments for that. Well, uh, it's easy to read something like this, and uh, it almost seems like a picture. It's like a story from just centuries ago in a, a time we can't imagine. We here have lived all of our lives without facing anything like this. And usually we expect it. We never will. But Father, we know that around this world, your people are being in prison, being arrested, being killed. So we would have fallen in one way, this young girl, which for being so determined to live for you, apparently she's still with, still alive. And if she is, well, we would pray especially for her protection. We would pray for your provision. Oh, we pray somehow you'll be a source of comfort and joy to her, even in her circumstances. That you will help her each day to see past the circumstances that she is presently in. And Father, it's as impossible as it might seem to us. We would ask that you could use her. Sake of the gospel. Father, let them see in her something that's so different. We cannot help but wonder. What is it? Who is it? Oh, we thank you for your her witness and we pray again for her protection. And soon we'll leave. Keeping along the same line, uh, Monday I was in the adults uh, in mission. On mission, there you go. And Sister Geraldine shared with us a little bit of information, and I'll ask her to share with us, all of us tonight, another family that serves the Lord, and uh, so we can know how to pray for her and people like her.
sometimes they have to be moved to a safer place. And uh, the board tries to send them to a place that will allow them to be a Christian witness to the same groups of people that they were with before. And sometimes it, the area they're in calls for extreme uh, confidentiality about information concerning them. And also, uh, if
Any questions, uh, anybody, or comments on what has been said? I do remind you to be praying for Ukraine. You know, that country has had a massive exodus because of the danger in the country. So millions have gone into surrounding countries, uh, probably mostly away from Russia, uh, the other direction. So we need to be praying for those countries and those churches in those other countries and how crucial it is that those who are there are ready and listening to the Lord's leading and speaking and are reaching out and ministering and touching them. When the Lord sends people your way, may He help us be ready to reach them when they come. So we remind you to pray for that as well. Okay, I'd like for you to look in the scriptures with me. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. My wife and I have been able to study the book of Romans together. What a blessing that is. Um, we've been studying uh, parts of Romans 8 lately and talking about it, and um, I want to read some verses and we'll make some comments about that, okay? In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, verse 26, likewise, the Spirit, okay, so he's already been talking about the Spirit who gives us life. The spirit of adoption. The spirit who gives us the assurance that we're saved. The spirit that conforms us to be like Jesus Christ. And if you have the spirit in you, then you don't walk in the flesh. You walk in the spirit. What a powerful truth that is. Not just a wonderful picture. But what a wonderful, uh, powerful truth that is. And so in verse 26, likewise, like the spirit does so many other things for us. The Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Now we named some things about God that for which we're thankful and we praise Him, and those started with the letter P. Uh, but if we were to share our weaknesses together, we could use a lot of letters and a lot of words, couldn't we? If I was just to start naming my weaknesses and you joined in and named yours, um, there's a lot of weaknesses there. But praise God when you get saved. When you receive God in your life, that is His Spirit in you. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. I guess the Lord knew we were going to have them, didn't He? And He's prepared us for that. So the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For, and here's Here's a concept here, the graph. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Now, is that true? Have you ever felt like you didn't know how to pray for what you know you needed to pray for? Well, it's true of all of us. Because the Bible right here says so. <laughs> our, one of our weaknesses, one of our weaknesses that God knows all about and His Spirit helps us, is that we don't know how to pray just right or in the right way. And now the Bible teaches us some things. We can't use that as an excuse not to pray. Because we know a lot about prayer that we aren't using. Amen? <laughs> um, but he, the Spirit helps us pray. Verse 26. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But, now here's how it helps us. The Spirit Himself, God Himself, makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I'm glad He does. I, I'm glad whatever that means, you know, those groanings. He's praying for us. And He's helping us pray. Now He, that's the Father, who 
who searches the hearts ours, knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he, the Spirit, makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God, right in alignment with God. So we've been taught to pray to our Father in heaven in the name of Jesus, and we've been told that when we do that, God the Spirit, blessed Trinity, God the Spirit is praying with us and helping us pray. And probably, I just imagine, I don't know, and if you find something in Scripture that can enlighten me, please help me with it, but I just imagine that the Holy Spirit prays for things for me, the things I'm wanting to pray for and for me myself in ways that I'll never understand until I get to glory. I just imagine it's too high for me to comprehend it all. But don't you know that God who is one, blessed Trinity known to us as Father, Son, and Spirit, don't you know that if He is praying for us, He's not being ignored. God the Holy Spirit prays for you. Jesus intercedes for us. Now if there's prayer going on for me, I'm in good pl a good place. And you are too. Because I just believe that God pays attention to God. That's amazing, isn't it? And so our joy and our opportunity is that we would know God intimately. That the more we pray, the more we desire to know about prayer, the more we would desire to know about God. And that the Holy Spirit would help us as He makes intercession for us according to His will of God. Um, I've asked my wife to share something that she, she shared with me, and we've talked about it many times, and it's, it's who God is. It's how intimate we can be with God. And as she has uh, been part of a ladies' Bible study now for many years, sort of an experience they went through, and uh, just want her to give a testimony tonight, and then I'll come back and we'll close out. Okay? So I've asked Sharon to share. I've asked Karen to share. That's where that came from. There's no Sharon. There's only Sharon.
begin to say to him in prayer and in conversation that it should be an intimate relationship between me and my father. And I can recognize him as holy, as majestic, as my redeemer, as my Lord, as my Savior, the one who protects us, the one who for us, the things that we talked about before. But recognizing him for who he is and the characteristics that the scripture explains to us and that we know, I believe will help me to develop a more intimate relationship with my father. And it won't be all about me. It won't be all about what's my heart that goes through my mind as a child. It's about worshiping God because prayer is worshiping God. And if I don't recognize who my Father in heaven is and honor him and respect him for that, then I can't develop the relationship that I want to. So, my intention is to be more mindful that when I begin to pray, that I'm mindful of who my God is. And that He has called us to be His children. And He has been faithful to us. And He is committed and dedicated to us to be our Father, to provide for us. And He's given us the promise of eternal life. And I want to say those things. Or I bury myself in the petitions that he wants us to bring to him. He says, bring, Jesus said, act in my name. And I think we're to go boldly before the Lord and ask. But not without being just as intimate with God the Father, who is right here with us. He's not up there. He's not over there. I don't have to reach for him and look for him. I can sit and say, Father, just as he's sitting here with me right now. That's the relationship we have with each other. We come here, we talk, and we laugh, and, and we worship God, and, and, and we visit and have fellowship. We need to have that fellowship. So it's exciting to look at Romans 8 here and, uh, and to realize that, yeah, the Spirit gives us assurance of salvation. The Spirit uh, gives us righteousness, and the Spirit helps us pray. Um, but this is the Spirit who is God, the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus, the Son of God, that we pray through and in His name. This is the Father God that we pray to. And that's why knowing God is so important. That's why knowing who He is is so crucial. Knowing Him in such a way that just is not just facts. It's a relationship. A relationship. And, um, an intimate relationship. I just wonder, and we'll ask you this question. I've wondered about it. How intimate does God want me to be with Him? What about you, you know? 
just how intimate has God provided for us to be with Him? I'll just leave that question there and see if you and the Holy Spirit can talk that one over, read the scriptures, and meditate. Just how intimate has God provided for us to be with Him? It's amazing. Now, Leah, the girl, 14-year-old, who's now 18, was it four years ago? At, at, least, at last, from what we've heard now, it's been about four years, she has not denied her faith in Jesus Christ as God's Son, and God is the provider and sender of His Son, Jesus. And the Spirit living within her, being her life, she has not denied that that is true of her life. And that she's dependent on God. She recognizes nobody else as Lord. And she will not deny it. Isn't that amazing? I mean. She's over there in. Um, Muslim territory in Nigeria. Okay. Um, so my question is. I wonder how intimate she is. With her Lord. Think she's talked to him any of these four years? Huh. You think she's cried to him? You think she said thank you? Any at all? You think she's learned to have a little bit of peace? She better have, hasn't she? God gives that peace. Has she learned that God ministers to her and is her strength? And is her joy? And is her hope? And her future? Yes! God has been intimate to her, and she has become intimate with God. And that is not unlike what He has provided for us. Is it? And the intimacy must come with prayer. Prayer. Talking to God listening to God, asking God, God, what does this mean? And being willing to wait and learn some other things before he brings you back to it. And says, this is what it means now, Richard. I think you might understand it, but you might be ready for it. But talking to him, asking him to explain to us the words. And so here's an encouragement for us tonight. God's Holy Spirit helps us in all of our weaknesses, whatever they are, and we all have similar ones, and we also have unique weaknesses. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Amen? Praise the Lord. I'm glad. I'm going to depend on that. I'm, yeah, I'm going to trust Him for that. And one is that we don't know how to pray at times, but He prays for us in a way that we cannot understand. But just maybe He will help us know how to pray better too. I believe so. And God understands God. <laughs> I think that's what verse 27 says. He who searches heart knows the mind of the Spirit. Well, who is he? I think it's the Father. He knows the Spirit. Well, yeah, Father, Son, and Spirit, they're all one in one God. And so he understands what the other one is saying to him. And then the stage is set for us then to grab hold of the next verse. And we know that all things work together. Or to the purpose of God. Amen. So what an encouragement that is. To pray, knowing that God is praying with us, the Spirit is praying with us. I have an illustration I wanted to use, but I think I'm going to save that one and um, use an illustration I've learned since I've been here. So I'll bring that up at another time. Uh, anybody want to comment on prayer? Ask a question. Say praise the Lord. Or what anything. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Alright, let's look in our hymnals then at this psalm. Number six thirty. Now I want to point out to you a couple things in these verses. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and all our griefs to bear. He'll bear them with us and for us. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God and for everything to God in prayer. 
Holy Spirit helps us with everything. We for peace we could have, pain we sh might not have had to bear if we did not, if we just carried things to God. Verse two. So do we have trials and temptations? Yes. Is there trouble anywhere? Yeah. But we should not be discouraged. Leah, I bet, is not discouraged. At least regularly. I heard she would have given in by now. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. There's never a friend any more faithful that we can share our sorrows with. And every weakness we can take it to him. Verse 3. So are we weak and are we heavy laden with a load of care? Precious Savior, he is still the one we run to. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's sing that together, okay? Number 630. You can remain seated. touch one another, and uh, then be, be able to meet together again Sunday, all right? If you need me for anything, you call me at any time. I would be honored to be of any kind of help I can be to you. That's within us. <laughs> Dear Lord, we thank you that 